Welcome back, everybody, once again here to wonderful MX Deschambault, just south of Quebec City in La Belle Provence. And we are here for round... It, it kind of flowing very nicely, but on the racer side of things, what are your thoughts? To be honest with you, it's it's a one and done real quick morning. It's a full sprint, Galdi. There's no saving anything yeah. for Moto2. It's empty the tank now and go. Right now we get a good look. And the 250 class here first. These are the 450 points you're showing you on screen here. Pettis, Wright, Welton, uh, and all those guys, one, two, three, as far as the times go. But throw in a little bit of that, a little bit of that tea dags yeah. tea dags powder on top. The kid is feeling it. Oh, man, he looked awesome. And, uh, yeah, there's the 250 points. Uh, man, another change of hand. It's crazy that it was three up for McNabb, and he yeah. lost that many points 13, yesterday. 13 losses. That's a tough so that was a big hit. swing yesterday. So we were doing these sort of fun chats last night about how, I know, and Sanai and Ward only one point apart there. So, and they're only, I think it's 16, 17 yeah. outside of the, the top four so the, there's still four chances here with these guys four motors or sorry three motors four guys going with three motors left and it is um i think i'd like to see i go sanai ward uh McNabb and Piccolo. One, two, yeah, three, four. Today, nice. just to kind of, and maybe even throw Canella just in front of Piccolo for another just little two point little buffer. <laughs> so we head into there, and then the rookie report, Sebastian Racy, 212 there. This kid has been on fire. Uh, fifth and sixth so far in his uh, debut. And uh, the kid is, is good. It gets the starts. Yeah. It's such a big thing, especially when you're young like yeah. that. You get right in the mix. You got to learn. You got to learn from the best. There and there he is on, he's screen. on screen there, getting ready to go. And, uh, and you look at this hillside. <laughs> nobody here. Yesterday we were pulling people away from it, but there is nobody there. There's a couple of yeah, young uh, riders. Oh, that's, that's Dexter. Dexter. Uh, wait till Daryl. Daryl's going to get on him. <laughs> get the heck out of here again. And there it is. Thurks Canada back ride of uh, Jacob Piccolo right there. Former red plate over. Just a little bit left to the side, left of him or the right side of actual Jacob is the, the number 84. Tanner Ward, 3 3. Yesterday, there's Devin Smith, Maple Ridge Motorsports, Kawasaki, and Keenan Peterson in there on the 42. And um, I'm, this is what I see. A little pan out right now. Okay, there's Fraser over there. Ab, Ab inside. Yeah, up in the inside right there. So very similar to what they did yesterday, but that, that spot really bit McNabb kind of a little bit yesterday. He really has started. through definitely made a lot of passes i want to say i want to see mcnab and piccolo get the start together piccolo was on fire yesterday yes. but the only one if you look down the field that could match that top speed was mcnab and yeah. he never got out to see him yeah he never, never uh, even never even sniffed the wheel or yeah. anything about piccolo and even talking about the number 30 there he does carry the red play what an impressive second moto yeah sanai the veteran for that win so I guess every time we keep talking Kyle every time we see him it just keeps getting more impressive and more impressive with this kid yeah this kid is just getting better and better as we go along and Piccolo like a few years ago we would have never thought he'd be in this position with his inconsistency and just like little minor mistakes but now he's on fire he's getting it figured out and that KTM uh, Sky Racing Squad is uh, hold that red plate man they get the, uh, the LRX motor suit that guy knows what he's doing I've seen <laughs> him and Elmore Good, but not when you're fighting for this championship, Galdi. There's Sanai. Got a better start today. I think was where we'll see if McNabb can maybe make something happen. Yes. Um, he's got a little bit of clear track. Well, you know when you really get him. He's just behind these guys here. So this right here, if you're the if you're the fan of McNabb or you're wanting to see And he's got to make quick passes because if he's got any chance of catching Tanner Ward, his teammate, and uh, Piccolo, the points leader, he needs to make quick passes on Canella and uh, Sinai. All right, there's a good shot of Honda Canada, GDR Fox Rider, Tanner Ward. That second spot, Darren Sinai, Team Green Thor, Pro Circuit Kawasaki, Huber Motorsports. That's third. And then the MX-101 FXR Yamaha ride of Canella. That is on screen. That is three and four right there. 
and McNabb's just in behind right there. These are the spots we're here to think those outside lines can work because he's not getting chopped off by that guy on the inside. Yeah, I'm just uh, curious. Like, the lap times drop three seconds from lap two to lap three there, Galdi. I'm not sure why that is, especially with these guys leading and setting the tone, if it was just a complete sprint the first lap around. But uh, right now, I think... That going inside actually now Paul and Canella. So now the three four five battle starting to tighten up. They've got about seven seconds to make up yeah, about yeah, six, seven seconds to make up to where Piccolo and Ward are. So a lot of work for these guys right here. But this is that battle on screen that we're keeping eye on. And I'm liking what I'm seeing out of Canella right now, Kyle. This is awesome to see. He's uh, putting it all in line. Yeah, let's see you get this booter here again. Sanai gets it, Canella oh, opting in. Wow. Yeah, just barely getting on that fast. And it looks like they're not going to come. It looks like they're coming up short for sure. Right there. Canella losing a little bit to Sny, but McNabb not really gaining what he lost here. It's kind of a weird situation with that double sometimes. Yeah, so there, Gibbs still sitting in that sixth spot. So good ride for the gas, gas PRMX ride. Okay, so Piccolo, Ward, Sny, Canella, McNabb, top five. Gibbs, Gaynor, Benick, Elmore, Powell, top ten. Talon Unger, Wyatt Kerr, Keenan Peterson, Jeremy Mackay, and Sebastian Racine, top 15. Uh, Davey Frazier, Quinn Amiot, William Craig, Tyler Shuchuk, and Bryce Wage. Bryce Wage, sorry, sitting inside the top 20 points paying position. This lap time for McNabb definitely going to be faster. Let's yeah, take a look. So. 224-2 for Piccolo. 224-9 for Ward. 225-225 and a 223. Exactly McNabb, fastest on track. Yeah, he needed that. He's still just about a second quicker than Piccolo, so he's going to find. He has to find more speed and hope for Piccolo to slow up a bit for McNabb to get back into that title hunt, chase down that red plate holder. All right. Right on the wheelhouse. Here we go. You got to think some of this stuff might favor. Well, I guess they all came from the amateurs at some point, but McNabb just getting out of the amateurs, even Piccolo just kind of even out of the amateurs. That's all they knew. It was like four lap sprint races. You know, Canelo not that far out of it, but... Canella and Sinai may be into that sort of veteran-esque mode where McNabb can take advantage of those moments where they're kind of trying to take a breather, and McNabb probably hasn't even took a breath yet this whole race. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be any uh, breathers to take out here. These guys got to go. And now Marco just losing just a little touch there of Sinai, and now he's got to deal with a bit of defense. Look at this. McNabb running that outside bowl again, the shake and bake line. Wow, he is outside carrying speed all over the place. The long way around. Kind of make, they'll think he lasts a little bit that time on a share. Like, now, you know, if you're going against your Tyler Gibbs, it's, it's a little bit different than going against your yes. Canela Sinai's. Yeah, so Canela and Sinai's can make those insides work a little bit quicker than maybe Gibbs can. And uh, these guys heading back towards that tricky section. We've seen Dylan Wright crash yesterday. So. Oh, there's oh. a melee of nonsense going back in about the 15 to 18 range. Just back, back there, did a little cheating. Lots of guys, but look at this. Canela now closing back up. Let's see if he pulls the trigger. On this double, Sinai with a good scrub. Sinai oh. not able to do it. Let's see if McNabb gets it. McNabb oh. does get it. Oh, my. Wow. Man, it does not look like he had the height on that. Uh, the view we have here. It just <laughs> looks like you're going to case that thing. It's making my heart beat a couple. Beat a couple extra He's got young there. knees on him. He's good. Oh, <laughs> well, actually, I was talking to Ryan Lockhart last night. He, they've wrecked two wheels oh, on that thing. Uh, same with Tanner. They've wrecked, he's wrecked like one wheel coming up. Yeah. still a little short on that jump. So. It's it's because they're coming. Well, on this screen, it doesn't actually look like they're getting that high, but they're from so high. So, Sanai once again doing a great job on that defensive mode, looking good. But look at this, we got to get up to that lead pack right behind us. Wow, Tanner Ward, Ward has turned in a 226. Oh, these guys have slowed up a lot. Wow. Uh oh, we're gonna have a five-way battle here if this keeps shaping the way it is. And McNabb now, look at this, right around the outside, maybe here on. On uh, Canella scrub, get the power of the ground. Canella gonna move over. No, McNabb's got the drive. Honda Canada. G what a pass for McNabb. This is gonna the accordion in here, Galdi. These guys aren't too far ahead. Here we got our leaders. Look at now Ward all over Piccolo, and we've seen this out of Piccolo, where he hits a little bit of a brain uh, a fade, and he just fades off the pace. So look at now look at Ward. Oh, I thought I thought I saw him take my Piccolo there. So Ward right there, look at this. And Ward is all the kid has got so much heart. He's such a fighter when he gets in these positions right here. So we're going to see what this kid is made of on the 84 Honda Canada GDR. 28 and a 26, and it was a 24, 25, and a 24 behind him. So look at these guys coming in back of this 1-2 battle. It's going to be 1-5 real quick. And you got to think, too, these guys are going so fast and pushing so hard. 
They could probably be pickle might be getting a little bit of that arm pump right now, Kyle. Yes, it's not rough, but they're just pushing everything they have to that arm pump. Yeah, look at that. His, you can see his posture. Now oh, he's looking back. Looking back again, Kyle. We saw him doing that yesterday to Sinai. So Piccolo now maybe feeling it. Ooh, a little bit of a hit, a little bit of a hiccup in that turn. Piccolo could be hitting the wall here, Kyle. This is scary too because all his competitors are right there. Yeah. One chink in the armor, he could be back to fifth. All right, so there's one and two on the screen. Look at this. Work to the inside right now. Gonna try to make the move already. No. Wow, that's close. Look at the there. guys right there. They are all over right now. All over the boys. Let's see if Piccolo can get this here. This may give him a little breather. No. no. Ward, Ward gets goes it. for it. Ward gets it and gets it pass. Ward makes it. Whoa, and then swings wide, though. Piccolo. And still hangs on to it. Tanner Ward to the lead here, Kyle. Honda Canada. GDR Fox with the leap into the lead. And here comes Sanai. And here comes McNabb. Wow. And we're not at that halfway point yet, Galdi. This is not good. With three motos left. Wow. Looking okay. Back. Oh. This is, yeah, Piccolo is not good. He's not in a good spot. We are just getting to the halfway point of this these guys, call, They think, are right, right there. Sinai, and, oh, he's got an issue, I think. Who's that? I, Piccolo has an issue. He keeps looking back. I think he's got a bike issue. Oh, no. Not an opportune time for a bike issue. I don't know. I Look at this, there's that line again from McNabb. Man, McNabb is the kid pushing so hard right now. Missed that replay of that pass, I believe, over there. That's all right, Tanner Ward made that pass. Canella's still on the end. And it is still Ryder McNabb, the fastest rider on track. Pretty easy to see how that is working out. Look at this, Ward stretching it out just a little bit. But McNabb, the kid is on the move here. Yeah, Ward needs to run and hide here if he wants to get back in this title chase. And, uh, yeah, he needs some help here. So now I could be that person to get in between him, McNabb, and Piccolo. All right. So Ward, Ward stretching it out just a small smidge right now. And Piccolo looks like he's kind of regained his composure a little bit, Kyle. He's not looking back. But, I mean, oh, little slider right there. Here comes him. Oh, he's looking up again. Here comes McNabb. Yeah, there goes Sinai. Sinai with the pass. There it is. Now and Sinai McNabb. Oh, 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 Piccolo, Piccolo is, wow. Piccolo's Something is completely wrong with Jacob Piccolo here. He's looking down. Bike issues for the number 30, Kyle. This is not good here for the points leader. Wow. I'm not sure exactly what's happening here. He looks down at his brake side there, so I'm not sure. Good 20-second gap. He needs to just muscle this thing home if he can here, Kyle, and take fifth place. This is not what you want to see. But I'll tell you what, this is going to shake the points up even more here for the championship. Yeah, so looking at Tanner Ward being 16 points out leading this. He's 17 points was there for Sinai. Kind of like you were talking about pre-show. Wow. Oh. Barely I, getting over that from Ryder McNabb right there. But look at Canella pushing back here. He faded back a bit, Galdi. He was about three seconds back, and now he's gained that time up on McNabb. Okay, I think Piccolo could be able to squeeze this home here. So fifth spot, that's a 16-point pull right there. That's the best I think that looks like it's going to happen out of the number 30, the Sky Racing bike right now, having some issues. And I got to say, the way that he's looking at it, maybe that jump swallowed up some spokes. Spokes broken in the wheel, you, something happened you to the rear. You've got to be You know what I mean? Yes, you were just talking about the Honda guys dealing with that. And it's risk versus reward. You're going to case that thing. You're going to deal with some consequences. So I'm hoping he can nurse this thing home because that is not what the Sky Racing teams need right now. A DNF would not look good. Sanai right now is really putting down the hammer. 226.2, a second faster than Ward. So Sanai right there and a little bit faster than McNabb, but both faster than Tanner. So the third and fourth and and uh, Canella, a 226.2, he's the fastest on track. Canella in fourth, the fastest on track, Kyle. This is going to be a great finish here. The one main event final for round number seven. We are getting it all action-packed for you. Piccolo, your early leader, having some problems now back into that fifth position. S Sinai has gained massive ground here. There, They're sitting in that 3-4 position. That one-point swing, he can just, just jump right up into this title fight. Wow, this is absolutely crazy how this could be happening here. And Marco Canella, outside of the points chase here, could just, if he passes any of them, it's a full steal. It is a full steal of points here Canella by Canella if he can make something happen. And look at this. One, two, three, four in the Watch. frame, Kyle. Watch this. He's going to try to duck under him just like he did to make... He got Piccolo. it. What a pass for Sanai. Sanai has got the line right there, ladies and gentlemen. 
Team Green, Kawasaki Pro Circuit, Huber Motorsports to the lead. Wow, and I counted him out three laps in. I thought Sinai was fading. He put on a charge here, and now he's in control. Unbelievable. Darian Sinai coming from about fifth position. Now into the lead here, just past the halfway point, the 157. The friendly American right now leading the way. That's incredible. But now McNabb, he's, he's feeling the go. He's got to get going. He's seen Sinai. He had a chance at him, but now he's fading back. Canelo just lingering in the shadows there. But Ward... Set up by just Darius and I. And you got to think, maybe you think McNabb has watched that line there. And Canella still sniffing the heels of the red bikes. Yeah, don't count out Canella. He is looking strong here. Whoa, oh, McNabb going forward, losing a bit of the traction, Kyle. Wow, yeah, they both lost a bit on that berm there. Tanner off to the outside, our rider going to the inside. Oh, a little oh, bit of a bump there, maybe not. Like they might have touched a little bit of air on that one. Like, These guys are carrying. Here goes McNabb trying that outside line again. And here's that. Oh, losing a little bit of traction right there for sure. The replay of McNabb going for it. Not able to. A 229 for Ward, a 225.5 for Sinai. Sinai now got a two second gap. He's pulling away, Kyle. Yeah, he's going to check you later. He, uh, he knows what this game's all about. We've seen three different re leaders already. Canelo, the second fastest on track, too. So the 46. This kid really mixed up. This is all playing in the favor of Darian Sinai, who I believe is 16 back right now of, of uh, Piccolo. Yeah. So this would put him ahead of Ward McNabb, and uh, that's a nine-point swing for a hit on Piccolo. We're going to have this thing down to about an eight-point gap between four. In it for the point stealing. He's just trying to get some overalls, but look at him. He's pressuring these Hondas. And he's regained comp composure after having a little bit of a fade there. Now he's back here. And Tanner Ward's helping the Canela situation right now, holding off his teammate. And I'm sure no team orders. These guys are both going for a championship. Oh, yeah, 100%. So Tanner needs to hold him back. Let's see where the 18 goes here. Is he going to go to his outside line? Yeah, he is. Okay, so is this where Canela makes a steal? No. Whoa, that's close. Wow. Wow. So it's a tough position for McNabb right now. You see him yeah. back to the inside. He can't be aggressive and do his outside lines because he's playing a bit of defense. All right, so the 18 going all over the place, trying to search for something to make it work right here. Is this where he gets the drive on his teammate? No, nothing in there. Look at Sinai just pulling away right now. This has opened up the title fight. Piccolo is still out yeah, there. He's, he's got, got 18 ten, seconds. 10 seconds behind him. Or sorry, 10, Gibbs. my fault. 10 Benick, seconds. So. Benick is starting to catch up. Yeah, so it's Benick now. That's his uh, his teammate there for Sky Racing. I don't know if there's any team orders oh, there. I bet you the board comes out on that one, Kyle, for oh! sure. Oh! Ward getting it. That that wow. for us is just scary. For Ward getting that double there. It doesn't gain much ground when he goes to that outside, though. Yeah, I wonder why he's got to go to the outside. Just He's not carrying that much speed, I don't think. But there's McNabb trying to get to the inside. Whoa, cuts right across this time. Not able to make it work. But the 18 is trying to make something happen right now. Yeah. There, look at that. Tanner Ward jumping back on the track. Look at the speed that McNabb carries into this tabletop. But he doesn't have that inside option. He's going to try to go wide right around. Wide. He's going all the way to the outside. Look at this. He's got him. Whoa, what a line. What a line for McNabb. This kid is unbelievable. Wow. What a pass by Ryder McNabb on his teammate. Honda Canada GDR work. Tanner Ward. Man, Ryder McNabb is the only kid I have ever seen be able to use the outsides like this in Canada. This kid is unreal. And he is not afraid to let it all hang out, Kyle. Yeah, that was an impressive line there. And he is the outside. I do for uh, McNabb right now, and then uh, Piccolo sitting in. Benick. Does Benick pass him? That's a, just only that's a you got, one more point. That's you got to think point. he runs block. You got to. At this this late stages, to help him out, it's not going to help Benick at all. To gain that one position, but it's going to help Piccolo tremendously. Okay, so McNabb gets Sinai. 
Piccolo gets by Bennett gets Piccolo. We go back into the final round with double red plates. We love to see it. This is the hot potato game for the ages. And here we go. We're gonna get that two board this time around. Does the potato just not cool down? It, it just hot. never gets cold. It's just too hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so McNabb, there it is. He's got Sanai right in front of him. The two board is in hand here, Kyle. Oh, is it getting stabbed again? Are we? Whoa! Is this a practical joke. Wow! Here? No two board yet. No two board yet. I guess the guys, because they're just under that two and a half. And here we go. Is that Benick? He did. He yes. got the pass. That is Benick and Pickle. So now that's another point loss for Pickle. That is back to sixth position for the red plate right now. So this. So now Sanai's mechanic has got to be like, you cannot let him by. He was only like four or five coming in. This would make them about two. Yeah. These two guys here. We would have a dual red plate, or we sorry, we wouldn't have a dual red plate because Piccolo would have it by about one point. Ah, this is getting confusing again to figure out right now, but McNabb and Sanai are in the wheelhouse for this championship right now, Kyle. Yeah, things can change that quick. Just a bike issue for Piccolo, and uh, that's it. That's all it takes, and we're back in it. We've seen McNabb have a rough day yesterday, but today he's right there for this overall win, one moto format. I feel like Tanner Ward's starting to push hard again up in the front right now because he looks like he's come right back on the wheelhouse of... Yeah, bad lap. Big time. Wow, 10 seconds back now. They must have had a crash there, a tip over. So we've lost a lot of time on this lead pack. Yeah, where's one, two, three in the screen right there? So, Sanai right now in control. So we know it's at least two and a half laps to go. Two and a half laps to go. And uh, Sanai leading the way. He's going to jump right back into this championship battle. If he, can, uh, if he can stay in this position, obviously losing that three points would be a little bit of a swing. But uh, right now we're going back in. Sorry, going back in the field. It's Sinai leading the way. McNabb only a second and a half behind here. Tanner Ward not too far behind. Not able to get that triple up there as they get to the leap. Does he? No, McNabb not doing that. Let's see if Tanner gets it. No, Tanner backs it. So these guys trying to get things sorted out. But Sanai with a second and a half lead here, Galdi. It's going to be tight here. So Sanai, yeah, this is amazing. Look at this going on. So Sanai with 17 back of Piccolo, one back of Ward, seven back of McNabb. So this would bring him down to four. And they would both be within uh, four of, uh, or uh, he would be in within two, two, four. Oh, man, there would be four points within the top three here. So Piccolo still a uh, second and a half behind uh, Benick. You got to think that Al's going to jump on that pit board and tell him, give him the point. He has to. He has to. That's one point. That's a, that could be an enormous point yeah. in this channel, especially the way that the series has been going. Yeah. There we go. Two lap orders out, Kyle. Two laps to go. Two laps to go. So Sinai in a familiar position. We've seen it yesterday where he was leading that first moto with a lot of pressure and that second moto where he grabbed that lead over Piccolo only to lose it in the closing stages. But it looks like he's got a comfortable gap there. By the stripe, it was 2.1. Tanner, 2.8 behind McNabb. So these guys, not as close. But you know McNabb wants that win. He's going to be hungry. He's going to be railing these outside corners like he's been doing all moto. Oh, yeah, he's going to be laying it on the line here for that, that again. Um... Uh, uh, McNabb, this, that could be enormous. That would put them tied at the top, I believe, at the end of this thing here. We'll figure it out once we get finished. But, man, coming into the Transcan, Walton, the final race of the 2021 season could be an unbelievable battle between Sanai, McNabb, and Piccolo for this title fight. Yeah, so Piccolo just coming behind us. That's how much ground he's lost since he's leading early on here, Galdi. But he's got, he's got a bunch of room behind him until Gibbs comes by about 10 seconds. Sanai pulling away just a little bit here, Kyle. Sanai, that veteran-esque uh, four, man. He is making a workout here in this one. Man, whoa, the berm disappeared out there, Kyle. Yeah. He almost went off the track. Gets the heart rate going there, Goldie. Big time, yeah. Team manager Chad Goodwin just go, just having a little bit of palpitation out there on that one for sure. So the one is going to have to go to bring home a full main event victory, a full 25 points. For all the photos. And see, he would be our fourth our fourth overall winner of the year here. So the top four guys in the points all getting an overall. So lots of depth within our 250 class, Kyle. Yeah. Looks like he's going to end up with another third overall, much like he did yesterday. 
Wow, the Piccolo train, the wheels have come off the track right here for our red plate sitting in that six. Sinai. That, so that would put Sinai within seven points of Piccolo. And McNabb on the 22, at 22 down to a 15. That's a seven point swing there. That would put him three points. So it would be seven points between one, two, and three heading into that final round. But Piccolo still would have the red plate even after this sort of frustrating or maybe even disappointing moto. Yeah, so Sinai getting that white flag there. He is 3.4 seconds. So maybe McNabb running out of steam here late, Galdi. As you can see, he's not entered our screen there. He is right there. There he is. All right, so the boys have settled in. It looks like this may be the way it's going to end here. It was hot there for point that would be that could be he waits at the finish line and down to one point that's right of a nab or Sanai won by and he he between one to the, the motos whoever beats who is it, it's gonna come down for this red plate what a setting the setting for the final. Hit the same line again there, Kyle. Yeah, that line's completely blown out there. So Sadai working his way. He's only got a few sections to go. A few lappers in front of him. Looking down that list. Marco Canella is still circulating that fourth spot, but 22 seconds back after his incident. Look at that, uh, Berg Gillamy. I also want to say too that we motors pipes all the bells and whistles the final right the final left, here we go. Darren Sinai, our fourth overall winner of the year. The one moto format, he's gonna grab the victory. Number seven, the one main event format, just threw everything out the window as far as points and craziness. An amazing 250 moto number one here. I'm gonna be bringing in our winner here on that team, Green Kawasaki Hubert Motorsports Pro Circuit. Darren Sinai, full veteran ride right there. Usually it takes, you know, that first motor to warm up when you get out there, but uh, man, a dominating performance, made some awesome passes diving to the inside. Give me your perspective on that one because man, now the points are even crazier. Yeah, for sure. Coming into uh, uh, this weekend, I was a little bit back. I was fourth in the championship, you know, and I knew that um, if I want to win this thing, this championship, I need to go out and try to win every single moto. Um, I tried to do that yesterday. I got the first moto win, second and second moto. You know, we were battling. I almost had it, but I got second overall yesterday. Today, um, I didn't get that great of a start. I was on the inside, you know, like sixth. Uh, made some quick work into third, and then just put my head down. Uh, Marco was right behind me, and I was, uh, he was about to get me, so I'm like, if, if I don't move forward, he's getting past me, you know, and fourth sucks. So I, uh, I just caught up to those guys, not sure with what happened with Piccolo, but I got around him pretty easily. Um, and then I passed Tanner, and from there I just put my head down and tried to get some solid laps in. I uh, got that moto in the overall, so that's my first overall of the season. Feels really good. Uh, the championship is tight, and uh, we're looking into Walton trying to go for wins. I think we're down to about seven points in this thing, so we're going to wish Sinai good luck. Good job. Congratulations on that moto win right there for Darren Sinai. We'll bring in second spot, Honda Canada, GDR Fox ride of Ryder McNabb once again, showcasing that outside lines can work. The only kid using the outside lines, although you were talking about it saying you hit one, your legs came up over your head and stuff. I don't know if we got that on TV, but Ryder, a solid recovery after sort of a tough day yesterday. Got good points on the Piccolo thing now, and you're, you're right back in this thing with two motos to go. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I had uh, just bad starts yesterday. Uh, didn't come out of the gate actually that great, but I just kind of floated the inside and uh, actually came out in the top 10, so pretty pumped on that. And then I, uh, I swung a little ride. I think I was like almost off the track, and then I tried to scrub the step down, and I uh, caught my foot, and my feet went over 
my head and thought I was going down, but I ended up saving it. And then uh, just made a few passes and then ended up casing the, the big double there, but uh, didn't crash, so we're good to go. All right, well, two motos to go in this series. He's right in the hunt. Honda K and G. Dara Fox right there, the 18. Good job today. We'll bring in his teammate here next on Tanner Ward. Going third overall, 3-3 yesterday, third overall again today. Tanner, my friend, another amazing moto out there. Got to the lead, and then it almost looked like you might have tightened up there, and then you fought again towards the end. And But you know what's funny? A three on the day, you're still, I believe it's right around 11 points going into this final round between four of you guys. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. On our side of things, it's amazing to watch. I don't know what it's like for you, but give us your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was a decent moto. Like you said, I uh, got into the lead once I got around Piccolo and then just uh, made a couple of big, mis big mistakes. Those guys got on me, and I just kind of had three or four laps there where I was just so-so, uh, and you can't have that when you are uh, when you got four guys that are fast, like hell and running the same speed. So, uh, yeah, those two got around me, and then I uh, made, a, made a little bit of a push near the end, but, uh, yeah, just kind of wish I kind of cleaned up those laps. I definitely feel like I should have won that one, but... Uh, We'll go back, we'll rest up, and uh, we'll go back to the hometown and uh, get the wins at Walton. Yeah, Walton's a good place for this kid right there. All right, we'll let you guys get up to the podium. Darian and McNabb got to be going up there as well. An amazing 250 race right now. This is unbelievable, the points. I believe it's 11 points from fourth to first. Piccolo will hold on to that red plate, but only by a scant three over Ryder McNabb, and he's got another three on Sinai and then another four back towards. So don't do my math totally on that one, but I'm usually pretty close. But, man, you know what? It is insane. We're going to Trans Camp for the 250 class, but we still got 450 main event number one coming up next. We'll be right back after this commercial with the, with the main event for the 450 guys. Welcome back. Here we go, the RoyalStribute.com whole shot, 30 board to the sky, the heads are down, we are going racing. That was a quick turnaround on that right there. The start of the inside, Dylan Wright, whoa, big get off, guys, into the bushes. A bike up in there, who is that? Riders down all over the place. Wow, all our players up and at the front of the pack, but we lost about four or five bikes right there, Kyle. Yeah, there's yeah, there's two dags in that mix there, just behind. So lots of these, the, the top guys out front early. Not sure who went down. We'll have to wait to see about, if they come by the stripe here. Maybe missing Moffenbeyer. Moffenbeyer doesn't look like he might have been one of those riders in that crash, so... Hopefully everything is okay. Look at this. So Dylan Wright already going out to Pettis. Pettis grabbing another RotoStream.com hole shot up in the lead. And Dylan Wright already trying to make something happen right now. He saw what happened in that 250 moto. You know he wants to get on, on fire right now and make something happen here, Kyle. So what is the uh, the points here? Or is it four points? Four points Pettis has got over Dylan Wright. So even if Dylan Wright wins this, it would be right back to the one point we had coming into this rare story into round number six there yesterday. So crazy stuff is going on out here in the 250 and the 450 classes. Unbelievable turn of events happening right now. Oh, ah, it was Moffenbeier. So there's Sean Moffenbeier down right now. Looks like he's going to get up on his own. A ah. little bit of help from the teams, but it looks like his body may be all right at there, Kyle. That's good to see. Yeah, it's good to see him getting up, but we lost him Tremblay yesterday to a crash, and now Moffenbeier. It's just we don't want to deplete our field. We don't want to see these guys go down, so all the best. You know, it's yeah. funny, the start is a, is a fast when they lean to the right. We don't ever see a lot of accidents no. happen, but that one right there looked a little scary. Look how tight this is already. So these guys Red going plate right now on the 15, the factory KTM Red Bull Thor ride of Dylan Wright. Or, sorry, of, uh, of uh, Jess Pettis, I'm sorry. Dylan Wright on the Honda Canada GDR much. Fox. Yeah, <laughs> this is the hot potato game here is insane in all classes, no matter what we're doing here at the Triple Crown Series. So, so T-Dag's not getting off to that start, I bet you know, because... I don't see T Dags passing these guys up to get to that front like where he was yesterday. Maybe the Thompson thing, but yeah. uh, not uh, the Welton Wright. Right, not Pettis. Welton Wright Pettis, I don't believe, but you never know. Stranger things have happened, and they seem to be happening a lot here in 2021. Yeah, he's riding that confidence wave too, Medagli, after a great day yesterday, Atlantic second. Oh, is Wright going to try to make a stab already? No, not quite able to get down to the inside line. I want, oh, oh stall. Pettis fully stalls the bike. Oh, it screws hopefully? right up. Does he get the pass? No. It actually screws right up enough that he doesn't go wide. <laughs> and nothing happens. Look at this. Now Welton, maybe. Welton side by, or side by side, switches track to track. Look at this, though. Dylan right up the inside. He's going to get the power down on the big Honda 450 and make a pass. No. Unable to do it right now. 
Give a shout out to Ethan Ouellette, who's sitting in that sixth spot right now. Impressive ride with the 192 machine. Great job by Ethan Ouellette up there. Love seeing that. Dairy up in there. Here it is. Boucher. Look at this, though. Coming down this GP section, see if Wright can make it happen. Wright is so good at outbreaking. Does he make it happen? No, to the inside. Pettis going to stuff him. He does. Pettis wow. pushes him wide. He's not making it easy out there, Kyle. Nice pass back by Pettis as it looked like Wright had the line. Now look at this. Medaglia working the outside of Thompson here as they come down. Not enough to make it work. We don't see many people hitting that outside around that hip jump. I see like Wright's got the speed right now. Pettis maybe kind of slowing up the pack. We're making squeezing the top five together here in a nice tight little sandwich up in front. Dylan Wright trying that Rick Nab line, not going quite as wide. And, of course, this track not nearly as rough as what we were seeing yesterday. These guys are going to be carrying some heavy speed. Yeah. Although lap time, 226, not as fast as I thought it would have been. So it got a little beat up after that 250. We've seen those guys earlier. Don't up to the, close to the 30. But this five-pack right here, jump out, we've got that uh, replay of the stall. Oh. Wow, stalls it, but then it screws Dylan up enough that he's still able to hang on to it there. So it's kind of a little funky, embarrassing moment of our 450 Pro guys, but they clean it up, and they're back in action. And here they are running one and two again. Red plate swapping all year long between these two guys. Whoa, wow, the line's drifting right wide there, Kyle, right up into the banners. Yeah, so these guys able to get this leap, no problem, on those 450s. One, two, three, four, five of these guys ripping over there. One of the other riders in that melee looks like it might have been Liam O'Farrell, who is in 20th position oh, right now. So Liam up and going, got though. caught up there, but he's back up. So it looks like everybody that was caught didn't oh, actually wow. get any injuries. But, wow, Dylan Wright really slingshot out of that turn, Kyle. Yeah, that was a fast line there for Dylan Wright. And it's uh, it's deceiving there. I walked over there in practice, and it, it, it was already getting, like, cupped out yeah, yeah. through there, yeah. even with the short amount of tra tra track time they had. So Pettis, Wright, Welton, Thompson, Medaglia. Ethan Ouellette, Yannick Boucher, Ryan Derry, Anthony Spadaccini, Taylor Ciampaccini. There, Travis Barrett, Samuel Power, Parker Eels, Cole Wilson, David Conn, and Liam. Well, wow. look at that outside line that uh, Wright's been working. Scrubs off that downhill, just not enough to beat the KTM to the next corner. Wow, Dylan Wright really pushing the rear end of Jess Pettis right now. Welton still hanging in there. Thompson. Just a little bit behind that. And then Medags. This looks like it could be a two-horse race once again here, Kyle. Yeah, it looks like these guys getting away after that incident uh, of stalling the bike there for Pettis. He's regrouped and he started pulling away from uh, the Welton Thompson Medaglia race. All right. So, 15, Jess Pettis. There, look at that lap time. Yeah, that, that's why the lap time was slow. They were uh, at 22s that last lap. Okay, it's because they had that go. stall incident. They just I guess that's what it yeah. was. There you go. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. Now Pettis stretched it out another bike length or so. But when you do that stuff in the 450, it never seems to work quite as good as it does for our 450 class here. That's usually the way it happens right there. Yeah. yeah. Number one of, uh, oh, we were looking at that replay. Yeah, sorry, we got the slingshot the there. Slingshot and that's there. exactly what Dylan Wright's got to do. He's got to slingshot this corner, get the drive to the inside of the next corner, wherever it be. He's been putting himself in a bad spot to make that move up the inside. If he's always putting himself to the outside of Pettis. Right here, here it maybe? Is. No. Oh, no, he cuts Pettis it off. Pettis shutting the door. But, uh, Pettis playing great defense right now, and Wright just kind of searching, playing, uh, trying to play the track to his advantage, but not, whoa, both losing a little bit of that rear end traction, Kyle. Yeah, he's playing a great defense, and I feel like if Wright gets by, the floodgates are going to open, and the lap times are going to be down to that yeah. 20s, 21s, and he's going to check out. Dylan Wright's so good at just sitting on the rear end of the competition and dogging them constantly. Yeah, that's a great shot there. You can see all the top five coming through that funnel and through that double section, but right here, see, he puts himself on the outside. Maybe he can slingshot back. Trying oh, to he's got that in inside there. line right here. Here it is. He's got Kyle's, it. he got the drive. He sure does. He's going to push him wide, shut the door. Oh, wow. <laughs> Scrubbing into each other right there. Look at that, though. The pass is made. Pettis down the inside. No, not go. Oh, big rev. Big panic rev right there to Pettis. Saying, Get the heck out of the way. And I yeah. Got the chop off. That was a great pass by Dylan Wright. Nothing dirty there. No, nothing dirty there. Just coming together, shutting him down. And then Pettis, not happy about it, just revving the bike, trying to scare him off. You're not going to scare a guy with the number one plate, though. This doesn't happen in this sport. Watch this lap time now. All the ammo out of the rest of the competition, basically just stealing their gun and taking it away. And here's this like replay right now, Kyle. Look at this. Drive right gets to that little rut. Down, he shuts the door. 
perfectly and then scrubs a little into him. Maybe that is where Pettis kind of got a little upset. Yeah. As Pettis trying to regroup. Buckle down. He's got one moto. Nothing to hold back. Just go after right right now and, you know, force a mistake. If you can force a mistake out of right and gain three points, this is looking good for him going into the wall. Yeah, they literally just, he's got to just bite, keep the hook right in that rear wheel right there to make something happen. And we've got a good battle going on here for three, four, and five right now. All three of these guys, this is the way they are in the points race as well. Uh, and missing Tim Trombley. Tim Trombley was with these guys right here. But and Dylan Wright, Byer, obviously. Moffenbeier, Tim. And Moffenbeier, yes, as well. Moffenbeier as well, so... We still got uh, Elette there doing a great job sitting in that sixth position. So that's a man, a, a, a great ride. ride by him. Boucher sitting at seventh, Spadachini and Derry, uh, nine ten. Champakini just sitting at eleven spot. So those so guys sick. having some great races out here. One moto format. So this is for the overall. Whatever they finish, that's it. So right now, Dylan Wright is your overall winner. The way things stand, Jess Pettis would get second. It's like Tyler just lost a bit of time. This lost a bit of touch to Thompson's rear wheel. As these guys been going neck and neck. Oh, now Thompson solves Whoa. his KTM. Something going on, maybe the battery issue or something with the old K the Orange Brigade right there. Both bikes, both factory guys having a bit of an issue. And Thompson's still able to get it going quick, though, as well there. So. Chunk out, but just that hydraulic clutch, he doesn't really do that. So maybe just something a little bit there just in the gearbox kind of locked him up. But both guys still able to get back going in there. So that is good to see. I believe that was the Ethan Ouellette and Yannick Boucher battle just a little bit down there. And we got a flag waving in the background there. I didn't see what that was. There's Welton going by. It's like Pettis. We lost Pettis. We've lost Jess Pettis. Jess Pettis is the rider that went down somewhere. Right there it is. The number 15 is gone. The number 15 is gone <laughs> off the track right now. Bike issue or crash, Scaldi. The medic flag is waving on that first jump where Pettis and Dylan Wright uh, cross paths on that. Running right there, the track. This is off. So yeah, I'm sure. I don't know if this is here. No, this is just a. No, uh, this is a replay, replay of, of that. Thompson. Yeah, no, Thompson not stall. Not the Pettis incident we're looking for, but. Uh, I think it's got to be. Oh, a here bike it is. Here he's on the side of the track here. Where did he crash there, Kyle? As that tabletop that's you're talking about, so we can't see exactly what's going is. on, but it's that tabletop. Him and Wright came together. Obviously, not that. That lap, that no, lap, Wright was ahead there for sure. So wow, this just opens up this championship wide open now for Dylan Wright. Look at he's down at the bottom of the screen right now, and Marshall Welton up at the top. So wow, let's hope this is not a bad thing for Jess Pettis. Yeah. Uh, you see, you seen it with Moffenbauer getting hurt earlier. Obviously, he wasn't in the championship hunt, but a guy with the red plate going down like that, it's its tough. The KTM squad right by his side there. Hopefully, all good to get back going or get back to Walton and race. Yeah, so as we're keeping an eye on that there, the top, this is second, third, and fourth going at it right now. Yeah, so second, third, and fourth. in that one main event at uh, Gopher Dunes, but in lap times, 225, 226 is for Thompson and Medaglia, so these guys have been holding it tight, and you look up, the, like I said, Dylan Wright running a 220 lap time, wow. just decimating the field here. Qualified with a 218, so almost matching what he did there when the when he's all on his own, definitely the fastest rider. Raw speed, without a doubt, the fastest guy on the track that can make things happen. Once again, we're hoping that Jess Pettis is okay. That flag is down and everything like that. So we're hoping that the number 15. Oh, here's that battle. But fifth position with these gifts, you got Mar Jay sitting in fifth with Ethan Ouellette on the Cycle North right there, and that is Bailey Motorsports. Uh, Deanna Boucher on the Husqvarna. This is awesome. This is top great five. for these, for, great for these guys. Yeah, top five for Boucher right now as it sits. And that who is leading the leading the charge there in that sixth fifth spot. 
But yeah, Yannick Boucher, that Bailey Motorsports Husqvarna. A seven, Derry, and then Parker Eels. Those guys are going at it. As they're doing that. These guys are going at it for two, three, and four. Get out of the hole. That guy's stopping right in the turn. Oh, there, Tyler. So they kind of messed both Thompson and uh, Medagli up as Thompson tried to go to the outside. And Medagli got stuffed into him as well. So uh, Welton just gaining a bit of time there. As you see Thompson working the outside, Medagli and Welton working those insides in that back section down there as they work up. But this is the closest we've seen. Here we go. We go to that yeah, battle there. Spadaccini. Anthony Spadaccini on his KTM FXR. There's Ethan Uthlet, Cycle North, then a TLD Gas Gas, Ryan Derry, and then there's Parker Eels who's been coming from way back. So he is really having a good ride out here. Parker Eels not giving up. Yeah, that's a great ride there for the whole shot racing. Oh, well, that having an incident. He's oh. going to drop back. So now it looks like Parker Eels made two passes, one corner there. Wow, two for one special going on out here. Full buffet meal for Parker Eels, taking as much as he can off the plates of the others. Yeah, you got to think that Parker Eels looking for that uh, that fifth spot there. That Trying would be. I mean, every up. one of these guys, every one of these guys is an all-time high as far as they're sitting right now and, and on their resume. So awesome to see. Yeah, so Parker Eels looking up the track there. He's got Spadaccini just in front of him there at sixth, seventh, and eighth right now on screen that we're watching. As our leaders are coming by behind us right here, these guys are going to be lapping up into the fifth and sixth place region here soon, Kyle. Yeah, they're they're going to get up there. You see them in the background yeah. jumping down that hill. So it's a pretty cool track. You can see the different battles going on all one uh, screen. But there, Parker Eels working his way back down that section there. Very rough already here, and it's only the one moto before these guys, the 250s. But Spadaccini holding down that set is that seventh spot? Ah, uh, sixth position. Sixth spot. He's sorry. Sixth position. Because Boucher, somewhere he's... He just dropped in there. He just dropped down. I'm trying to... Uh, there he is at the top there. So Boucher fifth. So Eels has still got a chance to get up to that fifth position. And he is uh, definitely looking now. But actually, Boucher's got good lap times too. So it'll be, it'll be interesting yeah, so to see Yeah, so Spadaccini getting that double. Made that big difference there. Eels was all over his back wheel dropping in. That double makes that big leap and uh, pulls away. All right. So the 66 local area include the uh, MX-101 area there. And that's his home track. So good to see the 66 do what he needs to do, and it looks like that battle for two, three, and four are still, still tightening still up right up, there with yeah. T-Dags as well. Look at it that. Good, good camera switch, fellas. Good job on that one, Isaiah in the booth. Three different lines you see there. Yeah. Tops on the inside, Welt in the middle, and then Medags around the outside, maybe staying out of each other's roost because the tear-offs has got to be an issue. Look at that. It's Look at this again. Three different lines. Wow. These guys are just They got options. They got options. It up. So as they work back to this more technical section, it looks like yeah, Thompson having to go up the inside. He's got a lapper in the way there. All going to that inside move there. But uh, great tight battle. We never see this in the 450 class. Usually they get like five, six seconds. Obviously right out front by over 15 seconds now. That's what I like to see from the boys out here. Battling hard, pushing the limits. And I like to see what Thompson, he's hung in. This is the longest he's hung into a battle like this this yeah. year so far. So he's feeling a little bit more comfortable, if you will. Uh, at the front of the pack this time. Yeah, so he's got that pressure behind him with Medaglia. He's trying to push forward. He's in that spot where you want to be aggressive, but you also got to play a bit of defense there. As right just goes in behind us here in the booth. So that's the difference. He's just going by the finish line. Those guys are just going by where Pettis went down. So Jess Pettis, once again, if you're just tuning in, our one moto format here for round number seven of MX Deschambeau. Jess Pettis, the early lead, got the Rosary.com old shot and is on off the track, crashed out of this moto. So Dylan Wright right now is 16.9 seconds ahead of this battle on screen with Marshall Welton, Cole Thompson, and Tyler Medaglia. And uh, these guys have been battling just like this this entire moto, Kyle. Since the not, start. Yeah, since the very start of this race. They've just been neck and neck. No pass has been made. No wheels been thrown in on the insides or anything. But, uh, yeah, the two Thor riders and then the Callus. Rider on that gas gas there. Tyler Medaglia finishing second overall yesterday. Welton finishing third. Thompson, I think he was a fifth or sixth overall. The way things stood. So these guys battling it out for that last last two podium spots, really, uh, Galdi. And somebody's going to be a sore loser out of these three that's going to have to ride back their pits. Yeah, definitely. That's what it is. And it, I know Tyler Medaglia does not want to be that guy out there. And uh, a mention of Tyler maybe during joining the MX of Nations team again. Of course, he's going to be riding the ISDE team as well. Yeah, he rides everything. And he's, what did he tell us this morning? He's going to ride an off-road race next week, and then he's going to go race all week at Walden with his kid. And then, like, the guy's insane. He's yeah, insane. He mentioned that he, uh, he, it's funny that he mentioned 
it's a three-hour race he does. He, he didn't want to double class at the Transcan because yeah. he's like, he needs a recovery week. Yeah. But he's going to go race at Walt Transcan <laughs> in the plus 25 class. Uh, the guy is an absolute Canadian hero. Three lines again? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> three different lines again. By and it was di- different guys. lines because Weldon well took me inside. <laughs> <laughs> these guys are giving us something to talk about here in the booth. Round seven here at MX Deschambeau. Welton, Thompson, and T-Dags right now. That is two, three, and four on screen. Yeah, they're winding down. We're 22, almost 22 minutes into this moto. So lots of, lots of laps left because we, we know once that two board comes out, it's still five minutes of racing yeah. regardless. It's a long time still. So, oh, we got guys. a good battle between, it looks like, 9, 10, and 11 that just came across the finish line between Ouellette, Simpacini, and Tommy Dallaire. Um, so those guys are having a good little battle with inside that top 10. As well as Dylan Wright actually just coming right there behind them. Picked so it Dylan up Wright, again, a 223 flat. Wow. Dylan Wright still dropping the hammer out here, just cruising right now. 16.9 at the stripe last time around. I feel like it's going to be a little bit bigger this time, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, 16.9. Probably going to jump up to that 18-second uh, mark there as well. It goes by a 4, 20, 20 seconds. So Dylan Wright doing exactly what he wants to do, get back in this uh, this red plate back on the Honda. As we know, Pettis out of this, sitting on the side track. We wish him well. Haven't got any word I, I on him I kind of wonder yet. what happened there. That's a, like an odd spot for these guys to crash. It's a straightforward jump, an obstacle. I'm thinking bike issue, something like that. Let's hope, uh, let's hope the best for Jess Pettis right there. We know that he's able to get himself off the track. Oh, there's Liam O'Farrell, priority mechanical. Liam O'Farrell right now who climbed himself back into the race as well. And he is sitting in that 12 position. So Liam right now doing a good job really recovering after this part. But he's got about 30 seconds to make up to get into uh, inside that top 10. And here's that top 10 battle right there. Ouellette, Cianpacini, and Tommy Dallaire. Kyle, that is amazing to watch. Mike Jackson, GM, one of the tour, tour sponsors here. Ballon Hart, Cianpacini trying to make a move right now. He's going to that top 10. He got 10th overall with a 12-12 yeah. yesterday. So he's trying to match his best. And see if he can do it again. Well, he's got to beat his best if he gets to Lenny. This will put him in a ninth. Look oh, that'll put him ninth. Inside pass for the ninth position. No problem for Taylor. Good nice job move. out there by the friendly fella out of Ontario. As he leaps back up here. And I'm sure Tay's still jumping this uh, this big double here. He's and a look, leaper. Dylan Wright's coming behind him right now. Oh, there we go. We caught up to our leader as well. And back to that battle for uh, second spot there. Thompson. They're about the same distance apart. They just yo-yoing back and forth. Keeping it simple There's here. Liam O'Farrell, priority. So what's, what priority is Liam up to? KTM, he's up to 12th spot. The next riders on track was that Tommy Dallaire and, and battle. Look at this battle. Cole Wilson. That was Cole Wilson and Dario Zeka. That was her 15th and 16th spot. And a little love. Some stuff going on oh, all over the place. Well, getting a little sideways there. No problem at all, though. He's going to get back in the groove. And leap in that. You said you never jumped that jump there. Absolutely not. Not a, <laughs> not even a, a smidge of my body was going to float over. You that know that ball. blue crew could do it. I seen Moff doing uh, it yesterday. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, just grab <laughs> gears. Right, just grab gears. Right there. So, Welton, Thompson, Madags. Look at there's one, two, three. Like the exact same distance. Not much else going on between them. Still good battles, though. Dylan Wright crossed the finish line one more time, just lapping Taylor Simpicini. That is ninth place. So Dylan lapping up into the top ten, but doing lap times nearly 20 seconds faster than everybody, Kyle. So Dylan Wright on fire right now. Yeah, Dylan Wright just doing exactly what you, you know, he had a good night's sleep. He came back, and this is exactly what he wanted to do. Obviously, he'd like to see it, battle it out with Jess Pettis and beat him straight up. Jess going down there. But uh, regardless, you know, Wright was going to put this moto in. He, he had a statement to make there after that bad day yesterday that bad second moto yeah 100 percent. so at uh the start bit him there but it, and it cost him that red plate but as it stands right now it looks like he'll be able to bring that back under the tent and have a fairly comfortable margin going into the final round if jess pettis isn't allowed or isn't able to line up again we don't know the complete status of so, the number 15 just yet i just got, I got word that it was like right by the whole shot sign he just landed off the side of the jump and cartwheels we're just still trying to figure out okay. what kind of injury he's dealing with not sure if he's up and off the track Odd yet. spot, though, for that one. I haven't seen anybody crash on that. Yeah, it's so wide there. So, uh, interesting to see. Hopefully, again, Jess is okay. But back to the action again. That's two, three, and four. It's still going out of here, Kyle. Not much between them. A little gain here, a little gain there, and then they just all kind of seem to end up in the same spot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it just depends on what who hits what line. They've been swapping lines like crazy here. It depends on what lapper they get into as we see that lapper just stopping up there, letting the top three, or sorry, second, third, and fourth go by. That's uh, Max Filipek, actually. Max Filipek losing his front number plate. Good job out there by Max. 
Um, a journeyman day by day, and then comes out and races his bike on the weekend. So good to see my young Max Phillip again. His old man used to be a former pro racer back in his prime. So oh, no cool way. to see him out here battling hard now. But yeah, nothing seemed to be between these guys whatsoever as far as getting uh, space or even making a pass or. They're all like, if they make a mistake, the next one makes a mistake. If they yeah. hit a fast line, they make the fast line. It's like, I feel like yeah. this is the biggest gap Marshall's had the whole time. It's like a second. And uh, that's just the way it's been with these guys. They just keep matching each other's lap times. They're oh, getting... Marshall not able to get that gap. Thompson closes right back in, and so does Madag. Look at this. A mistake really makes it happen out here for one rider. The other's riders just close right up on him. Yeah, I wonder if uh, Welton just sick of hearing the two guys right behind him. Just kind of had a, a little bit of a brain fade there. Not able to get that double. Let's see. Able to pull back out though. Good line there out of Welton coming out of that tight stuff. And we'll see heading up towards the finish line area. Looks like we just had Wright go by the finish line there. So he came in at a 227. So he slowed up. He's in cruise mode now. Galdi with a nice 20 second lead. Yeah, Dylan Wright out front doing exactly what Dylan Wright does in the competition, slaying your ground. Uh, this now, I gotta wonder, I don't believe that Welton was was 20 points back of Pettis. So right now he's sitting on a 22. Pettis actually still able to get, uh, oh no, he actually's up one point. He's paying one point position out even after his crash. So he's not gonna get any points on this overall today. So a 22 point Welton could be sitting in second spot at the end of this moto here. Yeah, yeah, so let's uh, let's see how things go, especially with uh, Welton running so strong there, just keeping it consistent, always putting himself on the podium, you know, having that win at Gopher Dunes, which is huge for him. Uh, yeah, he could be not in the title hunt because it's going to be a big gap to, to make up on yeah. right, but putting himself in second, that looks good on the resume as well good, moving forward, especially in a rookie year. Yeah, 100%. So, a little rundown here. Dylan Wright, Marshall Welton, Cole Thompson, Tyler Medallia, Yannick Boucher, top five, Parker Eels, Anthony Spadaccini, Ryan Derry, Tommy Dallaire, Taylor Simpacini, top 10, Ethan Ouellette, Liam O'Farrell, Mitch Rempel, Samuel Power, Cole Wilson, top 15, Dario Zeka, Danny Gary, David Kahn, Travis Barrett, and Max Filipek are your top 20 right now. It's now t -Dags. He's right there again, Kyle, right there in the back door of the 16. And uh, you, you just can't seem to make something stick or make something work. Yeah, it looks like t -Dags now putting the pressure on Thompson. Welton just pulling just that little bit of gap there as they funnel down there with lappers. Medaglia going to that outside, trying to get around. Trying to get a drive, getting that gas gas power to the ground right there. Nothing in it for him just yet. Welton still getting that little bit of an edge. And they've lapped up into the top 10 as well. Like they just got by C and Pacini there a little while ago. And there is Tommy Dallaire. That is ninth position right there, Tommy Dallaire on the number 33. Yeah, so Tommy Dallaire in the top 10. These guys are deep into the field here as they leap over there. Danny Couchet still doing a great job in that fifth position. But a minute 45 behind. you got to think that Dylan Wright's going to be coming around and lapping him very shortly. Parker Eels not able to do as much damage as I would have thought. Oh, as I just say that, right behind us, Parker Eels is all over the back end of Yannick Boucher for that fifth position. Yeah, so those guys battling up for that top five, that would be huge for Team Whole Shot. Either uh, one of them. Either yeah, one either, of, them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. of course, either one of them. Yeah. But, um, Dylan Wright going by stripe. He's going to have there three is, laps to go. Great job, the camera boys there. There's Boucher up front leading Parker Eels. Parker Eels have come from way back in that first turn crash. So, a great right, Well, Boucher kind of stuffs it, opens it up. So, Parker Eels is really feeling it here, Kyle. Yeah, talking to Parker and Kyle Springman before this uh, this race, they said they needed to get a start. They didn't do that, but you know what? He's clawed his way back up here in the top five, and this has got to be his uh, career best. Look up the inside here. Going to try to make a pass on Boucher going up the hill. They're side by side. Eel's going to go wide, maybe slingshot down the hill. Get the drive on that big Honda 450, but the Husky yeah, Bailey Motorsports pulling the trigger and hanging on for the meantime. Yeah, wow. Here he goes. Let's see these slingshots around the outside. Yep, he's going to jump this wide line. In the blue crew corner. Eos is pushing the envelope here. Love to see these guys battling out here. First time ever in these positions out of race. And it's going to be their best career finish ever at a Triple Crown Series round. And once again, this is round number seven from MX Nation Bow. It's Monday morning here. And yes, Kyle, as you can look around yesterday, a packed house. Today, nobody. They all go back to work. The only ones not working in Canada are the Triple Crown Series. Yeah. We're having a... We're, yeah, we're working. We're working. We're doing oh, sorry, our things. Yeah. Not at a, a desk job, I suppose. Yeah. Really, a desk job. Although we do have a table in front of us. Yeah, so there we go. Okay. Looking for that top five there. That's Parker Eels right in behind. Yannick Boucher, both career best, regardless of where they finish. 5'6", five, 6'5". Six, six, five. Yeah. Not far behind these guys is that battle of the 2-3-4 starting to move forward 
on them as well. And actually, sir, Dylan Wright, there's Dylan Wright just coming in the frame. So, so Dylan Wright getting in that top five. Dylan Wright getting up into the top five and winning. It's going to go 5 1 in this one moto format. <laughs> yeah. It's going to go 5 1 in this one moto format. Yeah, so there, Dylan, not, Dylan not, much. not jumping the double. Yeah. Smart move, though. Yeah. When you're 20 seconds out from, or sorry, 15 now. Yeah. He's just cruising. But, uh, yeah, smart Welton move. at the top. He's actually at the top of the turn there. So those guys are really making moves. And Medags was all over the back at Thompson there the last time we looked. So we'll keep an eye hey, for that battle as well as we're looking at here for 5 and 6. Yannick Boucher having a ride of his life, and Parker Hill's doing the same. Two board and it looks like the two-lap board is going to be coming out for Dylan Wright this time around, Kyle. Yeah, so Dylan Wright just right in behind this battle here for 5-6. So these guys are going to get cut short one lap. I don't think they're mad about it. It's been a long moto here early morning Monday. Look at this. Parker Eels getting got that it. drive. Ah, he's got the low line here, Galdi. He makes a pass. Make it work. Parker Eels up into that fifth spot. Great job. Whole shot. Fox Canada backing him up. Get him into that fifth place ride. Two laps to go here, Kyle. Yeah, so two laps to go. These battling just behind them. It's shaping up to be a two-lap sprint. Looks like Welton's just got the biggest gap he's had. There's 2.3 seconds over Thompson. And then Medaglia, not even a second behind Thompson as those guys head back down that till. And back there, the battle for uh, that's sixth and seventh, I believe, between Spottacini, sorry, seventh and eighth. Between Spottacini and Derry, they're going at it hard, too. Just, dude, you know, it's funny. One, two, three, four, and then five. They're all getting in the last <laughs> lap here because the boys just got around them. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, so those guys all paddling out to the top six and all the one, the one section, but one lap down. So look at this, Medaglia around the outside, trying to make a move on Thompson. Here we go. Getting the outside drive. here again. Oh, Tyler got a pretty good drive right there. Can he make something work? He don't know if he's ever been wide around this section here. Oh, Thompson, Thompson making a mistake. Little mistake. Dag's got the drive. Is he going to soak it up? No. Stuffs him down. Yes, he does. There's a pass. Oh, there's a pass for the podium. Pass for the podium right there by the Gas Gas Callus Motowide. Yeah, let's see if Thompson's got anything left in the tank to try to come back. Oh, look at the that inside. little sideline. Oh, loses a bit of time right there. Thompson oh. falls right off the pace. So there it is. Medaglia doing it again. He's going to try to track down this podium. He's got second right in sight now. Maybe he's just going to make a last two-lap charge here. Could Tyler Medaglia go 2-2 here at Deschambeau in the back-to-back -back round? That would be insane. Okay, Let's so Dylan Wright way ahead. Now back in fourth place because Gas Gas has got him. And the Gas Gas is now on the team green right now trying to get... Work his way into the back end of that. And Liam O'Farrell has found himself inside. The, oh, he's still 12th, but he's not far out of that top 10. So Liam O'Farrell might be able to make a couple of passes late in this race here, Kyle. We haven't seen much of this guy. Here it is on screen. Dylan wow. Wright, 12 seconds out front. Doing Look. supreme damage in this one here, Kyle. Making yeah. it work. Making sure he comes out today smelling like a rose and having a little bit of red mixed in it as well. Going to have that red plate here with one lap to go the next time he crosses the finish line. So Dylan Wright, here it is. White flag is out for the number one machine. Just flawless moto here. Started in about second or third there. Made those passes. Now he's just going by the stripe there with that white flag. Two and a half minutes left of racing. And try to take it home for the GDR. Get that red plate back on the number one machine going forward. Welton and Medag still battling out. There are about two seconds between them. So we'll see what that happens then. Right now, again, there's not much else you can say about this guy. He gets up front, he does his business, and he just decimates the field. He just sucks every little bit of positive you may have as a racer chasing him right out of them. Yeah, and that's exactly what he did. As soon as he got that lead, he just laid down some fast heaters and just pulled away. Obviously, Jess Pettis having that injury, that crash. Dropping out of this race helped him a bit on that uh, gap. But, uh, yeah, Welton and Medaglia Thompson all battling behind. Look at that little line, a little oh. hop up the hill. Little Looks fun. He's just having yeah. fun of that. Yeah, he's just cruising out here. A nice Monday cruise. And uh, looking good. The number one right now looking to claim victory here for our one main event format for round number seven of the Triple Crown Series at MX Day Chambeau. And there's Liam O'Farrell just behind. He's actually right on the rear wheel of Taylor Schipacini to get himself inside the top ten, Kyle. Wow. Wow. Would have come back there for Liam O'Farrell, yeah. the lunchbox man himself. He must have had to skip out. Oh, no, it's a holiday today. Yeah, in it's Ontario. a holiday in Ontario. So he actually does. Not in Quebec, though. He's probably got to work tomorrow. I mean, he's got to work tomorrow. Yeah. So. It's funny. His main sponsor is his boss, and he's not on. He got to work still, buddy. He's still got to work. Good people over there. Prior, priority Mechanical, big supporters of mine in our AMO Ontario series. Love having them on board, and a big thanks to them. But 
Uh, nothing support right here other than an absolute kick and butt for Dylan on right on the Honda Canada to DDR Fox. That's at his support staff. And, man, I'll tell you what, when they put the bike underneath him, he knows what to do with it every single time with their cowl, and he makes it happen. Yeah, he gets it dialed right in there. Get, no, oh, he's jumping it. Decided to needed to do it. Just for, for the fans. For the fans. <laughs> for the fans out there. Yeah. Just looking okay. in behind him. I was trying to see that battle there because it's about nine, ten seconds behind, so not too far behind. We're going to see if Welton can hold off for a second. Uh, I was just looking to see if Madags. Madags looks like he's about a second and a half still behind. Straight. This is where we lost Jess Pettis earlier on. Dylan Wright, the final big double to go. Checkered flag in hand. Honda Canada, GDR Fox, number one, regaining the red plate one more time. And going to be wearing it to Walton with a good points lead. Dylan Wright taking your main event win here at Triple Count Series round number seven. There you go. The number one getting it done again right in behind them. The number two of Marshall Welton just coming by the stripe. No pressure on him. And number five, he's going to round to the podium. Another podium for Tyler Medaglia here at Deschambeau. Unbelievable job. Great ride out here by our top three combats. We'll take a little break and come back with the podium interviews for the final time here at Deschambeau for the Triple Crown Series. Welcome back, everybody, here to Triple Crown Series. Monday morning, one main event. Dylan, once again, got into the lead, demolished the field. The red plate, red gear, red plate, red bike. You're all red once again. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously good to be back with the red plate. Um, after an off day yesterday, I mean, the first moto was good. Second moto was not good. Hit the ground hard, but um, so we get paid to do, man. Recomposure, re re get back, and uh, we get paid to do this job, and uh, that's what I do. I come out here, I treat it as business, get the business done, and go back and focus on Walton here in two weeks. You know, you've had this kind of year where it's up and down, up and down. Unfortunately, 15 had a crash or two, but also maybe is that sort of something kind of going in your favor now, heading in now, as you've got about probably 22 points heading into this, the final round. Yeah, I mean, I'd never like to see anybody get hurt. Um, Jess is a great competitor, a great rider, and he's been riding good all year. So um, hopefully he's hopefully he's okay. Never like to see a guy go down hard like that, and I would imagine these guys wouldn't want me to go down hard like that. So um, I got mad respect for Jess and everything that he's doing this year. So um, hopefully he's okay. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's nice to uh, put a good ride in like that and ride like I know how to ride. It's been uh, I've been having some curveballs sent my way, but, um, you know, just got to try and be a champ and ride it out. But, obviously, couldn't do it without my whole team, Honda Canada, GDR, Fox Racing, uh, my mechanic, Justin, uh, Colt, um, Redline Construction, Tire Craft, Peter's Paving. Um, That's the champagne popping behind us. <laughs> warm out. It's warm. Um, just everybody behind us, Oakley. Um, my fiance, family, fans, uh, it's always good to be here in Quebec. So I'm um, glad to get the win, and uh, we're just going to stay focused, head into this uh, last round. we got a camp at Gopher this week, so I'm going to go have some fun with the kids and uh, pay back to the sport. Sounds good. Dylan Wright taking that one main event for Matt Wayne. Good job, Red Plate right there. We're bringing in the Team Green Kawasaki Thor Parts Canada ride of Marshall Welton grabbing that second spot. Uh, an unbelievable ride out there for him. He had battles the whole way in behind him. Probably didn't even know what was going on. He just kind of kept his composure. But Marshall, a solid one motor for him. You kind of like these ones. You've gone one, two in these sort of strange ways that we're doing it. Just give me your thoughts on it out there because it, it was a good moto and you were really pushing hard at the end of that thing. <laughs> yeah, I uh, had a lot of pressure from behind me. I didn't really um, see who it was, but you know I could constantly hear kind of in that back section. They, they kept pulling up on me, so I uh, needed to clean up a few lines back there. But um, it's cool to get that ride. I, I was a little heavy on the clutch there, so I had to do a few no, no clutch laps at the end. I could feel my bike getting sore. So, uh, yeah, overall, just happy to come out with a podium this weekend, back-to-back -back podiums, and uh, we're healthy coming into the last round. Uh, thoughts on the back-to-back -back days, how far as it works? How are you feeling right now in the body-wise? Yeah, I'm pretty fried. Uh, it, it takes a toll on you for sure. Um, I don't know, just especially being early in the morning, we, uh, you know, it's, it, it takes it quite a bit out of you. My whole body's pretty sore right now, but I'm happy to you know, celebrate a little bit. Sounds good. Get your celebration on right there. Second overall in the day, Team Green Kawasaki Pro Circuit, Huber Motorsports. And we bring it in the number five, Kalis Moto, Kobaquid Gas Gas out here. He's going to take it a little longer. He's probably had to have a couple Advils. He's limping up because he's of age coming up here to the podium. But like it is limping right now coming up. Tyler Medallia so tuckered out there, whether it's off-road, on-road, whatever it is you do, man, you put all your effort in. And that was an awesome ride. And uh, talking about the pass rate at the very end there, you were behind Cole the entire race, and then you finally found a little opening. Yeah, I was trying to um, I was trying to set it up in the back section uh, because there were, he was going inside before the steep uphill, and uh, I just had to let go of the rear brake and commit to an outside, and it and that, all that took was just to get it close enough so I could squeak up the inside and make the pass. It was uh, yeah, it was a good ride. I, you know, Marshall was right there the whole race too. We were 
it was a good train there. It was fun. A lot of battles. Uh, you're not a young buck anymore. I asked Marshall the same thing. He said he was fried. How are you feeling today after a whole long day of motos yesterday and then this one here this morning? Uh, my lower back's a little bit sore from yesterday because you got to stand up a lot out there. Um, but other than that, I feel I felt better in that moto than I did in the first moto yesterday. So. Um, I got, as it goes on, I think I just get warmed up, but maybe. <laughs> That's what it is. He starts getting the joints yeah. looser. Tyler Vendaya, Kobe Good, Gas, Gas, Callis Moto. Good job, third overall right there. We'll get the boys up to the podium right behind us now. Celebrate the champagne. That is it. That is a wrap on round seven of MX Station Bow. Quebec delivered. The crowd, the racing, red plates swapping all over the place. Our best wishes to the number 15. Not sure of that injury just yet, but hopefully we can get him back for the trans camp for those final races. But Dylan Wright, once again, domination. Brings home that red plate. Champagne is popping. It's time for you to pop off that couch. Go get outside. Enjoy yourself. We'll see you at the trans camp for the final round here.